Uh, good morning. Thank you all for being here. I uh, just got a first-hand look at the terrible effects of the Squire fire. First, I want to thank the fire crews, uh, men and women of Oregon and the surrounding states who risked their lives to put these fires out. Uh, on behalf of a grateful nation, I want to thank you for your service to the country and thank you for what you do. I uh, flew over the biscuit fire today when we were coming in. It's devastating. I mean, it is big and it's a powerful fire that um, has been raging for more than a month. Uh, it's amazing uh, the scope of the devastation that's taken place in Oregon as well as other western states here in this state. Uh, a million acres have burned. A million acres have caught on fire. Hundreds of millions of trees have been destroyed. Uh, countless lives have been affected. Uh, same thing all across the West. A lot of people whose lives have been turned upside down. I saw firsthand the effects of fire in Arizona. I remember going to that school, uh, Governor, where the people were just emotionally spent because of uh, what the fire had done to them. These devastating fires are threaten the safety of our communities, obviously the lives of the firefighters. They destroy homes. They ruin farms. These fires destroy critical wildlife habitat, and they leave behind uh, long-lasting environmental damage. And as we work to put out the fires and to bring relief to the victims, we have a responsibility as a nation to work together to prevent the devastation that can be caused by future fires. We have a responsibility to bring sensible policy and put it in place. Today, I am announcing some steps my administration is going to do to restore the health of America's forests, steps that I believe and we believe will help prevent the kind of destruction we've seen this year. Before I talk about that, I do want to thank uh, Secretary Ann Veneman and Secretary Gil Norton for coming and for working together, for listening to the voices such as uh, the voices of our governors. Uh, these two ladies understand that not all the genius in the world is in Washington, D.C., that uh, if we listen to people whose lives are affected by managing nature that will probably get better policy. That probably will get better policy. I want to thank Jim Connaughton, who works on my staff and has helped develop this policy for being here. I want to thank uh, John, the Governor of Oregon, John Kitzhoffer for being here. Uh, John Kitzhoffer and Dirk Kempthorne brought the Western governors together to develop a sensible policy as to how to deal with this, uh, with this issue. And Judy Martz and and uh, Governor Jane D. Hall of Arizona are with us as well. Th this isn't a Republican issue or a Democrat issue. Managing our forests is an American issue. And it requires a, uh, a, an approach that understands there's difference of opinion. And we ought to work together to achieve common, common ground. And uh, John's being here today sends that signal loud and clear. I appreciate you so very much, Governor, for coming. He's an interesting character. Who, uh, <laughs> who I enjoy being around. Uh, I appreciate uh, Senator Ron Wyden and Senator Gordon Smith, again, one Democrat, one Republican, who have both made up their mind to, uh, to get something done. Uh, Senator Wyden has been working with uh, Senator Craig to develop sound policy. Uh, and, of course, Greg Walden, the congressman from this event, is a very uh, active voice in and reason, and reasonable policy to, uh, to help the people of Oregon. I want to thank them for coming as well. And I want to thank uh, Ron Winker, uh, who led our tour and did a fine job. It's, uh, little did he know a couple of weeks ago that he'd be here entertaining such a august company and <laughs> speaking so eloquently in front of the National Press Corps about uh, his job and about the job of protecting our forests. And, and doing the best we can do. I want to thank the community leaders who are here, people who to care deeply about the future of this region. Uh, I, um, I believe, like 
you believe that our forests are one of our nation's great treasures and uh, therefore we have a responsibility to protect our great treasure. It's one of our responsibilities as citizens of our country. Um, and yet, as we've seen, our treasure is being wiped out by fire. I've looked, as you have at why, and it's pretty clear that this uh, fire prevention strategy of our country has been short-sighted. And we frankly hadn't done a very good job. And when you hadn't done a very good job of something, it's time to take a step back and assess why and solve the problem. Forest policies have not focused on thinning, just haven't. That's reality. That's the truth. We haven't uh, had a strategy to clear the forest floor of built up brush and densely packed trees that we have seen firsthand here and in other places around the country create the fuel, uh, the kindling for extremely large fires like those we're experiencing this year. The catastrophic wildfires kill the oldest trees, those which we long to preserve. They kill just about everything that grows in the soil. It's, it, it, we should note that because of short-sighted policy, even the sequoias of California, Mr. President, are uh, threatened. The fires that ravaged the West have destroyed endangered species habitat. They've damaged fisheries. They've eroded soil. They've become be breeding grounds for beetles, as we just saw. We were in the midst of a breeding ground for insects that prey upon weakened forest. Now, they, our policy has, has not had the health of our forests in mind. The hands-off policy that have contributed to this environmental crisis have been well-intentioned. No question about that. Nobody is questioning the intentions of those who have helped uh, put this policy in place. But they're dangerous, dangerous plans, and we've got to do something about it. All of us in elected positions must respond. The, some will say, well, there's thinning taking place. And let me just put what's taking place in perspective to reality. There's, um, at the rate at which we're thinning our forests, it will take a century, 100 years, to restore America's 200 million acres of federal forest lands to healthy and safe conditions. That's too long as far as I'm concerned. I know it's too long as far as forest fighters, uh, firefighters are concerned. It's too long as their senators are concerned. It's too long. And therefore, we've got to develop a different uh, uh, strategy. We must um, be active in our management of our forests. Uh, we must thin, and we must quickly restore uh, the areas that have been damaged by fire. People who fight fires and who study forests, who know a lot more about this subject than I do, agree. And that's what the American people have got to know. Come out and speak to a firefighter about good common sense policy. And you'll hear what I just said. Actively managing forests is going to be the centerpiece of this administration. And that's what I've made clear to those who work with me. And we'll begin by identifying and protecting those areas that are the most vulnerable to catastrophic fires, areas which are near our communities and our watersheds and other key areas. In order to affect uh, our healthy forest policy, we must cut through the red tape and endless litigation that, uh, that blocks efforts to restore forest health. For example, a thinning project to prevent catastrophic fire in the area where we were just standing was proposed six years ago. They said, Let's, well, what can we do to make sure this area is protected? Yet because of burdensome regulatory hurdles and meritless appeals and litigation, only a very small portion of this acreage was approved for thinning before the fires came through. 
And we saw the difference between an area that had been thin and an area which had not been thin. And the difference is catastrophic. That's reality. So for the good of uh, Oregon's forests, and really for the good of her environment overall, and for the good of her economy, I've directed the Secretary of Agriculture, the Secretary of Interior, and the Council on Environmental Quality to do the following steps. One, to authorize thinning projects on an emergency basis in the most critical areas. Secondly, to speed up the process of developing environmental assessments while considering the long-term threat that fire-susceptible forests is posed to endangered species. And to expedite the appeals process. Listen, we want our citizens <coughs> at the local level to have a voice. We want there to be a opportunity for our citizens to speak out. That's the great American way. But we must discourage the endless delays that prevent good forest policy from going forward. And Congress should pass legislation that will ensure that vital forest restoration projects are not tied up in courts. I mean, we can do some of this through administrative action, but Congress needs to act. And I'm confident Congress will act in a way that doesn't exclude people. That, as a matter of fact, encourages citizens particip to participate. I mean, there's nothing better than having citizens worry about the, 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 how to conserve assets and resources. I, I signed some legislation earlier uh, this month uh, in, in a, what they call a supplemental, which uh, provides protection for Black Hills National Forest of South Dakota. And the reason I bring that up is that slowly but surely, members of Congress understand that when there's a problem, we've got to deal with it. And my attitude is, if, if and, and I recognize the situation is different in Oregon than perhaps in South Dakota, but managing the forest isn't. Good forest policy makes sense. And so if it's good enough for South Dakota or part of South Dakota, it ought to be good enough for Oregon and Arizona and Montana. And so I... Um, and so I want us to move forward with policy. And there's, a, there's other ways to make sure that you know, the communities are involved. Uh, John and I were talking about to make sure that any good federal policy uh, recognizes that, I think Ron might have said, it, one size doesn't fit all. Obviously, the Oregon situation is different from uh, other states. The health of the forest isn't different. It's the same. But how to make sure we have a healthy forest requires uh, input from local people. The Congress passed these <coughs> pilot programs that encouraged partnerships of nonprofits or local governments or private companies to come together to uh, to remove small trees and brush uh, that fuel dangerous fires that makes sense but I don't understand why they need to be pilot programs if it makes sense uh, and we want to manage our forest these pilot programs ought to be not pilot programs but permanent programs all around the country so that we don't have a century of work ahead of us to make our forests healthy. We compress that time to a reasonable amount of time so our children and grandchildren can have healthy forests and so your children and grandchildren aren't fighting fires all the time. I, um, I also believe strongly that the 1994 Northwest Forest Plan made sense. It was a plan where people from different uh, constituency groups came together to talk about how to First, make the forest healthy, and that is the primary concern of this policy or any policy. It ought to be how to manage our treasure. But at the same time, uh, the, the plan talked about how to protect the wildlife habitat uh, found here in Oregon, or how to make sure that recreational areas were, were in good shape. Uh, and there was a dividend, by the way, to the Northwest uh, a Northwest plan of 1.1 billion board feet taken a year of sustainable timbering. And that, of course, is people can find work. And that makes sense to me, particularly in a place in a part of the world where people are having trouble finding work. Good forest policy yield a dividend. They yield healthy forests. They yield places where people can bring their families. They protect the endangered species, but it also one of the dividends is work, where people can put food on the table, and that's important. 
the human condition uh, is very important as far as I'm concerned. When somebody's looking for work who can't find work, uh, we need to do something about it. So I want to thank you all for welcoming us here today. This is a classic example of what is possible uh, given uh, what happened and what is happening. It is possible to have sound forest policy that will protect against fire. It's possible. It is possible for us to work together to achieve a good strategy to protect a national treasure. My, my administration looks forward to working with both Republican and Democrat alike to forge the policies to leave behind a legacy of healthy forests. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your concern, your deep concern about this beautiful state, this wonderful area. May God bless you all, and may God bless America.